Coming up on today's Airborne, the NTSB is still catching flack about the Asiana 214 public disclosures. PS Engineering introduces the first FAA certified VHF comm radio and integrated audio panel. And prepping for AirVenture with Sporty's 2013 EAA AirVenture app. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The NTSB continues to receive criticism for its actions involving the investigation into the crash of Asiana Flight 214 in San Francisco. The latest shot was taken by the Asiana Pilots Union and Airline Pilots Association of Korea. In a statement, the union said, quote, Accidents that occur in aviation are not due only to a single cause, but from many causes. The purpose of an accident investigation is not to benefit national interest of one country or enhance the corporate image of an airline, but to prevent the same or similar accidents from occurring in the future. End quote. The statement goes on to express the union's concerns quote, about the possibility of inaccurately identifying the cause of the accident due to NTSB's press conferences, which only give prominence to the possibility of a pilot error and unprecedented speed in disclosure of related materials to the public, end quote. An FAA-certified VHF comm radio with a fully integrated audio panel has been introduced by PS Engineering, which says it is the first such device to be available on the market. The PAR 200 system combines an audio control panel, high-fidelity 4-play stereo intercom with Intelvox, Bluetooth connectivity, and a remote-mounted EASA FAA-certified Trig Avionics VHF Aviation Communications Transceiver. Company founder Mark Scheuer says, quote, Ever since we introduced the PAR 100EX Experimental Aircraft Audio Selector Panel with a remote VHF comm radio, pilots have been asking us, when are you going to get it certified? End quote. Partnering with the radio experts at Trig Avionics made integrating an important piece of avionics with an advanced audio panel possible. PS Engineering's customers will benefit from PS Engineering Incorporated and Trig Avionics individual talents. The companies say this system will save cockpit space and weight, provide sought-after functionality, and save money over standalone independent systems. The list price of the PAR 200, including the VHF comm radio, is $2,995, and deliveries will start in the third quarter of 2013. NASA's parachute refurbishment facility will soon have a new tenant. Tom Patton has the details. NASA's Kennedy Space Flight Center in Florida has signed a new partnership agreement with BRS Aerospace of Miami, Florida for the use of the Parachute Refurbishment Facility, or PRF. The company develops and markets a variety of parachutes. The PRF previously was used during NASA's Space Shuttle program to manufacture and refurbish the solid rocket booster parachutes. With NASA's transition from the shuttle to future commercial and government missions, this agreement allows NASA to preserve the facility's capabilities for future spaceflight projects. Under a 10-year lease agreement, BRS Aerospace will operate and maintain the facility at its own expense. The company will gain access to the facility to begin work on September 3rd and will hire approximately 34 full-time employees by the end of the year. The company will utilize the facility to establish a technical research and development center for advanced parachute systems and for manufacturing prototype systems. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. Whether you're a newcomer or a veteran at AirVenture, one way to make the most of your time on the airfield is with Sporty's EAA AirVenture app. The 2013 edition is now available for download and it's free. This useful app, now in its third year, has been continually enhanced with user feedback to make it a must-have for anyone attending EAA AirVenture. 
With Sporty's AirVenture app, you'll see all the maps, times, locations, and schedules all in one place. And you can use this data to build your own AirVenture experience. With My Schedule, it's easy and fun to make an hour-by-hour -hour itinerary with only the events you want to attend. You can also access EAA News, Twitter feeds, and EAA Radio. Admission tickets may be purchased in advance, and the app includes driving instructions and detailed parking information. For those flying in, the app includes the complete EAA AirVenture NOTAM. Sporty's 2013 AirVenture app is available for iOS and Android devices, including iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch, and the Kindle Fire. One bit of instrumentation you won't find on the Mars rover Curiosity is an odometer. Still, it was cause for excitement recently when Curiosity's latest drive of some 38 meters took the mission's odometry to 3,376 feet, or just over one kilometer, about 0.62 miles. The drive was completed in the early afternoon of the rover's 335th Martian day, or sole, of work on Mars. It continued progress in a multi-month trek begun this month toward a mountain destination. Last Wednesday marked the halfway point of the Prime mission's first Martian year. Two weeks ago, Curiosity finished investigating science targets in the Glen Elg area, about a half kilometer east of where the one-ton rover landed on August 5, 2012. The mission's next major destination is at the lower layers of Mount Sharp about five miles southwest of Glen Elg. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird flight simulations as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop us an email to news by at aero news.net. Splash! is not the sound you want to hear when you're planning to land on an airport. But that's what the pilot of a replica of the Lark of Duluth, an early Benoist 16th seaplane, heard when he made what he described as a hard landing in the water near Sky Harbor Airport in Duluth, Minnesota. The Northlands News Center reports that the airplane was on a test flight and it was attempting to land when the accident occurred. Witnesses said that the plane was traveling too fast on approach and went down in Lake Superior, just shy of the airport. Pilot Mark Marino was not injured in the accident. He was able to extricate himself from the plane and was picked up by a chase boat following the test flight. Officials said that the plane was substantially damaged, but that the fuel system was not compromised, so there was no leakage of fuel into the water. The replica airplane was built by Duluth Aviation Institute for a celebration of the 100th anniversary of the airplane's arrival in Duluth in 1913. The festival was held July 12th through the 14th at Sky Harbor Airport. A U.S. Court of Appeals in Washington, D.C. has upheld a ruling that allows the FAA to set certain corridors for helicopter flights along the north shore of Long Island Sound. Helicopter Association International had filed a lawsuit against the FAA in 2012 after the north shore route was made mandatory by the agency.
It restricts helicopter operations to a specific overwater corridor, with exceptions for bad weather, emergency operations, and aircraft with no overwater safety equipment. The corridor requires helicopters along the north shore of Long Island to remain one mile offshore and maintain an altitude at or above 2,500 feet. The FAA had agreed with local residents that noise from the aircraft was unbearable and negatively impacted their quality of life. The lower court had ruled that the FAA has the authority to establish such routes, and the Court of Appeals agreed. Hilton Software LLC has rolled out the latest version of Wing X Pro 7. Version 7.0 delivers the ability to graphically visualize both real-time and predictive weather information from Baron Services in a highly customizable interactive map. Among the features of version 7.0 is the ability to view a route line and breadcrumb trail on approach charts and to view pitot static information on its moving map when using Level's innovative iLevel AW. The ability to seamlessly integrate Baron Services Advanced Weather with its award-winning moving maps. This weather information is tailored to the pilot's planning and flying conditions, enabling improved decision-making. Wing X Pro 7 offers an impressive selection of Baron's industry-leading weather information, which includes Nextrad, Visible and IR Satellite, Echo Tops, Service Analysis, and contoured surface wind speed, just to name a few. Wing X Pro 7 was the first major iPad app with ADSB weather and traffic support. The update is available immediately for download in the Apple App Store and is a free update for existing customers. And now it's time for Aero Video of the Week. A first flight for any new aircraft is a magical moment, yet one we as a public seldom get to see and enjoy. So we think you'll especially like today's AVW, showing some of the pre-flight prep and the first flight of the Aerochia LT-1. Find it on YouTube by searching Aerochia 1, the first flight. The skies of Northeast Texas will be filled with every color of the rainbow this week as the Balloon Federation of America's U.S. National Hot Air Balloon Championship gets underway Tuesday in Longview, Texas. 52 balloonists from across the country will be competing for the title and a place on the U.S. World Team for the next World Championship to be held next summer in Brazil. The competition will be stiff as the world's top two pilots headline the list of competitors. Two-time world champion John Petrin of Leewood, Kansas, and current world champion Nick Donner of Louisville, Kentucky, are the world's numbered one and two pilots, respectively, according to the just-released 2013 World Rankings from the Federation Aeronautic International. Donner's younger brother, Chase, from Atlanta, Georgia, is the defending national champion. Competition flights begin today, Tuesday, and continue through Sunday morning. The championship is being held in conjunction with the 36th Great Texas Balloon Race, the official designation as the Balloon Capital of Texas, by the Governor of Texas in 1985. In 2013, Gregg County, Longview, was proclaimed the Balloon Race Capital of Texas by the 83rd Texas Legislature. Well, that's our program for Tuesday, July 3rd. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. And please remember, Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.